waiting for the little button that says Facebook Live. All right, everybody, finally we're here. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. That is the reality of uh, the world right now when we have a pandemic. Everybody is using technology and sometimes it works perfectly and other times it's a little bit of a surprise. So I'm so happy that you're here for my first Tea Talk with Rachel. And of course, I had to invite Christine from Stonehouse Teas, probably because I'm one of your best customers and I <laughs> love to drink tea all the time. Um, but I just really want to say thank you for making the time to spend half an hour with me just talking about your business and some of the realities that you've had to face over the last year. So I'm going to start off everyone with a very quick introduction of the amazing Christine. So you purchased Stonehouse Teas in October 2016, four and a half years ago. Spent 15 years working at North Island College in the Culinary Arts Department and lots of years before that as a chef in Campbell River and on Vancouver Island, which is probably why you have some amazing and yummy treats that we can all purchase <laughs> and eat. Um, I will confess that I love your chai scones with caramel. That's one of my very favorites. Um, but you also are part of the Women's Business League and the Curling Rink and Women's Hockey League in the arena. So you're all over the community. And I have to say one of the things that I really appreciate about your work is your ability to work with other businesses and support other entrepreneurs. I think that's absolutely fantastic. So we'll talk a little bit about that later on. So welcome and thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to have you here today. Great, thanks so much, Rachel. I appreciate uh, the opportunity and look forward to being your first guest. <laughs> Well, we just thought we would do this to have a bit of a conversation with different groups uh, and stakeholders in the riding to share stories and realities that we've all faced uh, through COVID. So I thought what I would start off first with is just if you could talk to us a little bit about your business. Mm -hmm, perfect. So um, those people that aren't familiar, Stonehouse Cheese has actually been in business for 25 years. Um, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary. Um, 15 years at the current location on 11th Avenue, we've been there. And um, yeah, I've owned it for the last four and a half years. Um, we specialize in loose leaf tea, 120 different varieties. Uh, but we're also a full coffee shop, um, tea lattes, bubble teas, um, gifts, gift baskets, all that kind of thing, fresh baking. Um, so yeah, quite a diverse um, little business. Uh, right now I have a staff of seven, um, let me think, four full-time and three part-time staff right now. Um, yeah, so we're a bu busy little place downtown Campbell River. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. So one of the things that I was really curious about is what were the immediate impacts for you and your business? Um, and as a business owner, what things did you have to consider and what changes have you had to make throughout this period of time? Mm -hmm. So probably, you know, if I go back to a year ago now when, um, you know, COVID kind of arrived in Canada and, you know, still really unknown, um, a lot of the regulations were recommending people stay home. Um, we never technically had to close, but it felt like the right decision for the community. Um, you know, we were, we were selling food and beverage products, so we could have stayed open, but ethically it didn't feel right to say, come down and buy a chai scone and a bubble tea when the messaging was, please stay home and stay safe. So we made the, uh, the tough decision to close our doors um, last March, uh, March 24th. Um, but with that decision was an immediate response of how will we stay in business? What will we keep doing? So we immediately flipped to uh, curbside pickups, online ordering and delivery throughout the community three days a week. So that was the immediate change. And we were ready for that. You know, all the planning when COVID arrived and all the recommendations came out, planning one in stages of if we close, what happens? So we were, we were ready for that. And we immediately flipped to phone orders, social media orders, email orders, and yeah, curbside pickup and delivery. And, and then people said, you know, well, could we get your baking? And I'm like, sure, we can deliver carrot cakes to your house and scones. And so basically I just kind of reached out to my customers and said, what, what is it that we can still do? What is it that you want? Um, and just kind of met those things with the plan of we need to reopen and what will that look like? So immediately when we closed, we had a plan to keep going, but then the plan was when are we reopening? And what will that look like? And that happened um, beginning of May. Um, we went to 
sorry, I just got a low battery. Seriously, <laughs> I may have to charge my phone. Um, but we just, we went to immediate um, uh, takeout window and we've been running with that ever since, so. Yeah, I, I remember when I got back from Ottawa, because of course I was sort of stuck in Ottawa. And if you need to charge your phone, grab a charger. <laughs> I'm charging so quick. Okay, okay, quickly, because we don't want to lose you. <laughs> Thanks everybody for this. I love the humanness of these experiences, especially when you're interviewing a very busy uh, businesswoman uh, who does so much in our community. So I just uh, think we can wait a few minutes uh, for her to get her charger uh, so that she, uh, we don't lose her completely. <laughs> can hear all those sounds in the background. Okay, right, sorry for that is. technology. No problem. I needed to come home because I couldn't do this at the shop. You guys would have been listening to the whole shop operate. So <laughs> that's totally fine. It's we are like good I said, to it's, it's good to be prepared and you were. So that's all that matters. Okay. Uh, well, I just was saying that I, I do remember that. I remember how quickly a lot of businesses had to respond. And I was, of course, in Ottawa for the first couple of weeks uh, because I knew legislation would have to go through to deal with so many of these issues. And I can remember watching a lot of the things through social media and seeing uh, community members and organizations, businesses having to reimagine how everything worked. And I did mm -hmm. order tea and snacks uh, for my family and was so grateful that I could still get that. So I think that was amazing um, that you were able to respond so quickly. So as we move through COVID, I think the changes uh, that are happening, and I mean, right now our numbers are going up again. Um, I know that those concerns and challenges change all the time. I'm just wondering if you could share uh, what federal supports uh, or programs worked for you. Did you see anything that was a significant gap? And also really just in the spirit of learning and listening, was there anything that I as the MP or my office could have done more effectively to support businesses like yours through the pandemic? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, what was interesting is as the supports rolled out, it was trying to figure out what are they and what do they look like and how do we access them? And I know for me, one of the biggest struggles in the beginning of COVID was a lot of the noise. And by noise, what I mean is there was so much news around what's happening, what's out there and trying to get true facts, I found extremely difficult. Um, but what I really appreciated, Rachel, was um, we still laugh, but we used to take a coffee break every day. And the time of that was the morning Rachel update on what was happening. So people that don't know, Rachel did a, a daily update of what was happening. And for me, it felt like you were speaking directly to me. It felt like I'm getting direct information of what is happening and how to access it. So for me, that was super valuable. We took a coffee break, shut off the music every day and was like, okay, we got to listen to Rachel. We got to know what's happening. So for me, getting um, clear, concrete information of what's happening with the government and then listening to Bonnie Henry daily to find out what's happening from the health perspective were two really good things for me to focus and to shut out all that extra noise of what was going on. Because there was, there was so many new things. We don't even know what COVID is. And then you know, here's some supports, what are we going to do about them? So um, for me, those things were, were really important. Um, and I think, you know, that helped me kind of get through and know what was available, what was out there. Well, that's a much bigger compliment than I was expecting. I really appreciate it. And I, I remember that period of time. I mean, I can't even imagine uh, how stressful it was. And I, I kept thinking as we were going through that, because we were getting so many phone calls every day and it was from so many different people with very different experiences you know trying to help people get people home from overseas mm -hmm. uh, to businesses saying what the heck and how do you even envision a future when we don't know what the future looks like at all and and it was it was stressful so we tried to make information as accessible as possible and uh, we appointed one staff member that was like you just focus on small business you watch and read mm -hmm. and learn everything so that when people People call uh, because I sometimes feel as an MP that is one of the things that we do is make what seems very monstrous 
step by step <laughs> for people <laughs> as they go through that process. Well, so, the other thing is I was getting the weekly emails and to be able to then see things in writing as well, because, you know, you're hearing things, but only absorbing so much. So then to get something in writing and I would print them off and be like, well, Rachel said, here it is on paper. So it, it, it felt really grounding for me during a time of so much uncertainty. Yeah, it's been a lot. And I feel bad because um, it's still a lot for people. And, you know, when we see the numbers go up, I think a lot of people are like, oh, like, when is it going to end? So hopefully we just see those shots going in arms and, and people getting back to normal as soon as possible. So one of the things that I have to say I've really noticed about the work that you do is your ability to collaborate with other businesses. And there has been some very fascinating uh, collaborations that you've done. And I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about what some of those are and also just what inspired you to do that and what value do you see that bringing to your business but also to the community at large? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, for me, the word collaboration really means community. And, you know, a lot of people can say like, yes, I'm part of the community, but, but what are you doing to be part of the community? And, and I think for me, that's, you know, growing up in a small town, it was all about community. You supported each other, you, you know, help someone out whenever they needed. And I was always looking at how can I be part of this community? How can I be part of Campbell River? Um, and me, the best way to do that was to collaborate. And I think what's what's been interesting is, um, you know, there's some real obvious collaborations. I work with other coffee shops and other tea shops and restaurants. And, you know, that's my background. Um, but then there's some different ones. I worked with, um, you know, Raven Song, for example. And, um, you know, when I met Valerie, I thought, wow, this is an amazing entrepreneur. Well, how can we work together? And that was about, hey, can we put tea in soap? And she's like, sure, I can try. Um, how about tea scented candles? And, you know, so for me, it was looking at tea outside of the box. We all know tea is a beverage, but what else can you do with it? You know, and then I met uh, my neighbor, Darren at Beach Fire Brewing. And I was like, hey, what about tea and beer? How cool would that be? Um, you know, then I met a chef and I'm like, hey, why don't you throw some tea in a pork shop marinade? And so there's just been so many amazing collaborations and, and opportunities for people to look at tea in a different perspective. Um, and for me, when a business comes to me and wants to collaborate, or when I approach a business, it's about being creative. And, uh, and probably one of the funny ones that I did is I worked with, uh, I got a message from Jen from uh, High Limit Plumbing, and her and her husband, Wesley, they're, you know, a newer company, I think they're three years in now. And she said, Oh, I'm doing a promotion and wondering if you want to collaborate. And I thought, wow, how do I collaborate with a plumbing company? Um, so immediately I was like, Hey, I have some ideas. So she came by the shop and I'm like, so for Christmas, I have these things called reindeer droppings and snowman poop. Like, does this work at all? <laughs> right. And we ended up coming up with this promotion that was super fun and totally outside of the box. So, you know, again, it's, it's about being creative and going like, yeah, how do we work together? And, and I want to work with businesses like me that, that are small businesses here in town people that live here in our community that just want to grow and build and, and be part of it. And uh, so for me, that is always, always exciting. Well, I love that. <laughs> what an amazing partnership, plumbing and tea. Why yeah. not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? I think that's fantastic. Well, when you think about how often you see people, you know, when we used to walk into your store, everybody smells the tea and you usually have those little jars and you can smell the tea. So that yeah. makes a lot of sense that you would talk to people and be like, how can you use tea in these things that people smell or taste? Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. For me too, when you look at, you know, for me, collaboration is really about supporting my community. And, you know, I think when we look at community support, we always, always think financial, but you don't have to be, you know, support businesses just financially. You can support them with, you know, a like on social media, a Google review, um, you know, recommending to a friend, just sending out some kind words, all those things help support business. So, um, you know, I, I think we got to look beyond of like, well, I don't have a lot of money to spend. That's okay. You know, tell your neighbor about us or, you know, those kind of things go a long way to working together with the community. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think that um, one of the things that I've really been amazed by is how collaborative people have been in all of the communities across the riding to support one another. And I think how people have started to reflect in their own community businesses that they may not have ever used before. But because we're in this circumstance, it's like, okay, what can I do to, to pitch in? And I think you and I have talked about this before, how when I did go to Ottawa for that period of time, I would walk, you know, between the House of Commons and where I stay and tons of businesses were just gone. And I was wondering, what is the difference? I'm really curious if there's a difference between smaller communities that spend a lot of time really trying to support one another during crisis and these bigger places where maybe they don't see that same kind of support. So Mm -hmm. I'm really, I've been inspired by the work that's been done by yourself and by other businesses. And I want you to also talk really briefly about the Campbell River tea, because I just thought when I remember watching that process unfold, and I just loved that there would be a tea for our community. And and you know that I've taken several little bags, and I've given them out to different people from across uh, the country, uh, just to showcase one of the things from our communities. And I'm just uh, wondering if you could talk about what inspired you to do that, and, and how you pulled people together to talk about what the flavor of Campbell River is. Yeah, it was a very cool process. So it was an idea I had right from the beginning, um, but it took time to figure out how will I launch this. And I knew that one of my expertise is, is flavors and blending. You know, as, as a chef, that's what you do. So um, I started doing some of these signature blends for a few businesses just to kind of see how it go. And then the plan was always like, wow, can I make a tea that tastes like Campbell River? And how would I do that? And I thought, well, who am I to say what Campbell River tastes like? I need a panel of people from Campbell River to tell me what Campbell River tastes like. So um, I wanted a diverse group of people and I contacted them and I first of all did an interview with them. And I said, if you were to taste Campbell River, what would you come up with? And I just collected all of their ideas and it was it was quite a cool um experiment to be like what do you think it would taste like like put put those words and thoughts into taste and then I created some blends and it was literally tasting after tasting I got rather than all together and I took some of the key things so a lot of people said wild fruit wild berries I'm like okay um, and I remember Darren from Beachfire he was on the panel and he said you know to me it feels like ocean breeze I'm like what does ocean breeze taste like and he's like maybe like spearmint I'm like okay and you know so and then lush green forest I'm like okay green tea and so it actually naturally kind of all these ideas came together then the challenging part was to make it taste good so you know for me but that was all blending and mixing and um, you know we did I think there was three tastings in total and each time there was four or five different blends I'm like try this what do you like try this what do you like until we narrowed it down. So it was a real cool experience. And then working with Destination Campbell River to, um, to be able to logo it and label it Campbell River. It was, uh, it was an exciting launch. And, and then of course I reached out to the community and said, who would like to serve this? And everyone was like, sure, I'll sell that. I'll serve it at my establishment. So, you know, immediately there was, you know, 15, 20 places serving the Campbell River tea and, and away it went. So yeah, it was a pretty exciting experience. A little bit nerve wracking because I thought, mm-hmm. wow, this, this is a big one. You know, this isn't just for another small business. Um, you know, this might be around for a while. I better make it good. But um, yeah, it was really fun to come up with. I, I love it. And I, part of the reason I love it is I think of all the places I've traveled to and how you want to buy a little something that really captures that space. And so when you talked about that tea, I was like, this is amazing to be able to buy a little bag of tea to bring home to talk about the time that you went to Campbell River. So I just I thought that was so much fun and I really appreciate it. Cool. So um, one of the other questions that I have for you is that, of course, COVID has made a lot of changes in our life and we're still waiting for this to be done. But I'm just wondering now that you've sort of lived through this process and this time, is there anything that you're going to keep after we are able to go back to what normal uh, used to look like? A lot, lot. I have learned so much over the last year. It's been unbelievable. So, um, you know, for example, we, we started delivery three days a week. We went down to one day a week and we haven't stopped. We, we still deliver every Friday throughout the community. And what I realized is people appreciate that. Not everyone can come into the shop during the hours that I have. So why not keep up delivery? It's not that hard for us. We do a Friday afternoon. So it's something that we're going to keep doing. 
um, our curbside pickup. People have been loving that. They go online the night before they place their order, you know, they bypass the whole line and we're like, just pick up their order. So, so easy and convenient. Um, you know, the online store has been amazing. Um, and again, people, people want to go to there. So we're going to keep those things up. The, the one big change, what is the day we can take down the takeout window and I don't know when that is, um, you know, right now it works really well for us. So we're going to continue that, but the hope is that soon we'll be able to take that down and people will be able to come in and sit and have tea. Um, so we look forward to that day, but in the meantime, you know, what we're doing is working. We're, we're going to continue that up. Um, and it's interesting. I read a quote the other day and, and I thought this is, this is my business. This is what we've been doing. So I'm just going to read it because I want to make sure I get it correct. So the quote was from Anne Lamont and it's like singing on a boat during a terrible storm at sea. You can't stop the raging storm, but singing can change the hearts and spirits of the people who are together on that ship. And I think that's what we're doing as journalist teas we're, we're singing every day and not just because we're happy but because we're trying to you know put communication across and make everyone that comes through happy and excited about where we're at today so um yeah i read that the other day and i thought wow that that's what we're doing <laughs> we're singing we're every doing. day so yeah. well i like that because you know I think of my great grandmother, Leota, that used to always tell me about some of the things that she lived through. And I remember thinking, I don't know how you did that. How did you do that? And, and she mm. just kept saying, you take everything bad that happens. She actually said something a little ruder than that and make it into <laughs> fertilizer. And right. so everything that happens to you, good or bad, you make it into something that you can grow into the future. Mm -hmm. And I, so whenever things that are hard, I always remember this might be hard right now, but hopefully it will, I can make it, it, it can be overwhelming to me, or I can actually do something with it and make it fertilizer yeah. for the future. So yeah. it, it, you, I think you've done an amazing job and I've been so impressed by people's ability to do that. Even though I also recognize some people, it's been very hard. Every business is different. Every mm -hmm. family is different. I know it's been, you know, particularly hard, especially I think on on people, um, lower income folks, and uh, some of the seniors. We've heard some sad stories, but um, I'm I'm just so grateful for what you've done, and I think it's amazing to get out there and and like you said, that delivery. And in the very beginning, especially, and even now, for people who cannot leave their home easily, that makes a huge difference. They get those yeah. things that bring them so much joy and pleasure, and uh, if they have somebody at home that's got a very you know, sensitive system, they don't have to risk that person's health uh, to do the things that they need. So that's fantastic. Yeah. I remember well, one of my you. first um, first deliveries, Rachel, and uh, it was one of those busy days. And I thought, oh, now I have to go to 15 different houses and deliver. How am I going to do this? And, uh, you know, I started the first house, Google map, where is it? Here it is. And I got to the door, I put the parcel down, rang the doorbell, backed up. And the, the lady came to the door and I thought, oh, hey, I recognize you. You're one of my customers. And, you know, so we chatted briefly. How are you? Here's your parcel. Have a great day. And as I went to leave out the curtain windows are these two little faces, the daughter and the son, waving and smiling. And I thought, you know what? This is why I'm delivering because those kids can't come to the shop right now. They need to stay home. Um, so after that, I thought, you know what? We see delivery drivers driving crazy around town. I don't drive crazy. For me, it's a relaxing time. I'm going out. I'm going out to see my customers. And for for them to allow me into their homes, you know, I've always thought of Stonehouse Tees as my home. And when you come in, I want to treat it like my home. And now the customers are allowing me to come to their home and, and bring the products. So, you know, for me, it's it's been amazing to be able to do that. Well, I appreciate that. And I think it's made a big difference in the community. So thank you for all that you've done. So we're almost at the end, but I thought as a fun thing. So this is the first of, of a, a few uh, of the series and people will hear more soon about who else have an interview, but I just thought it'd be fun uh, to do three questions at the end to sort of get a sense okay. of who you are as a human being. Okay. So this is just for fun, nothing serious. So okay. the first question is, what is your favorite beverage? Um, well, the answer should probably be tea, <laughs> but, but to be honest, I'm a real coffee drinker. I oh, start every goodness. morning with an amazing dark roast French press. Um, and there's nothing like a nice glass of red wine with dinner. Um, but I do also drink a lot of tea all day long. Okay. Well, that, mm -hmm. that's good. <laughs> yeah. One, uh, the second question is one of your favorite books or a movie. 
Okay. Um, I don't often get through a whole movie these days. Um, I find uh, I'm napping during it. But the one book that I'm reading right now, where is it? Um, I'm reading actually Alex Trebek's Reflections on My Life. Um, wow. And I and I just I got this for Christmas actually, and um, and I'm reading through it, and I just read the back, and it says, "I believe in the will to live. I believe in the power of positivity. I believe in optimism. I believe in hope." Mm -hmm. And when I read something like that, I think, "Yeah, me too." You know, I I need to read this, and um, yeah, it's been really interesting learning about his life, you know, and and how he went. So yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Awesome. And the last question is, what do you love about living where you live? Oh, how much time do I have left? <laughs> <laughs> a minute. Um, oh my goodness. Well, first of all, the beauty for sure. The the opportunity to be so close to the mountains, the ocean, the greenery of our community is just beautiful. And I think for me, the other the other big thing is what I love about Cam River is the sense of community. You know, we're, we're not a small town, we're a big city now, but it still feels small town. We, I really feel connected, you know, the opportunity to just have a conversation with you on the street. And, you know, it really feels like everyone is really close together and really wants everyone to, to be successful as a, as a community. So um, I love that, I love that feeling. Awesome. Well, thank you, Christine from Stonehouse Tea. Thank you for all Absolutely. the work that you've done. And thank you so much for taking this opportunity to just share with people in the region um, about your business and the realities of COVID and how you've taken some hard things and made them into beautiful things. Excellent. Thanks right. so much, Rachel. Okay, okay have a great day. Take care. Okay. And take Thanks. care, everybody else. We will do another one of these very soon. Bye, everyone.